In this video, I will be ranking every FNAF game from worst to best. This is both based on my personal opinion and hindered by outsiders' opinion, so I won't be all that biased. I made a video like this years ago, titling every game, but new games came out since, and my opinions have changed too. It also seems very fitting because of the new FNAF game, FNAF Into the Pit, coming out soon. I won't include some of the wackier games such as FNAF Freddy in Space or Fury's Rage because they aren't too major. Now, let's get on with the rankings. is by far the worst FNAF game in the franchise and it's frankly not even close. One, the quality of the game is very poor having it only be on mobile. Seriously, no one also remembers a thing about this game. The only thing is that is remembered is the dumb skins you can get such as Liberty Chica, Chocolate Bonnie, or 4th of July Freddy. Nothing is seriously memorable about this game. If the game was actually deleted and all memory was wiped about the game, it wouldn't change any FNAF lore. This game definitely was a test of augmented reality but it really didn't do a good job at it. Also the gameplay was dumb and confusing. Plus, the jump scares weren't scary at all. Also, finding people remotely making gameplay with this game is hard. This game wasn't, wasn't fun at either, hence that I played it and didn't enjoy my time playing it. This was the last FNAF game I played, but that was just because the other FNAF games required a VR headset or a price I'm not willing to pay. Still, FNAF VR is free and it still costs more than the new FNAF games. It's really not that good. I said the last game was the worst game and I still stand by that. But this game was also a big mistake of a game, but it still has more redeeming qualities to it. One, this game still has references to future games in the franchise such as FNAF Sister Location or FNAF Ultimate Custom Night. The gameplay is also very interesting where it's a turn-based fighting game where you play as characters from FNAF 1 through 4. The reason why I rank this game so low is because it's not a FNAF game. Like it doesn't fit with the franchise at all. Plus it's just rather silly. Is there any neat to see FNAF characters take on random bosses for God knows what? Yes, but really no. I personally wasn't a fan of this game, even though if it was its own game, not under the FNAF IP, it probably could have been better. But ranking it against other FNAF games is going to be lower. Even the coffin of this game was a mistake. The game was pulled from Steam and the mobile port that was supposed to come out just never did. The game is also, also only found on Game Jolt. So it may be a little controversial, but I wasn't a big fan of the newest FNAF VR game. Don't get me wrong, if I played it, I would probably have a lot of fun, but compared to the first FNAF VR game, it's really different. Besides this location, they made up a lot of new game modes for people to play, which to me didn't seem super fitting. I feel like the last game showed off all of the actual FNAF games as VR and explained why they did that. In this FNAF VR game, instead of playing as someone playing in a game like FNAF Peculiar Simulator or Security Breach, you're doing medical care and healthy or serving Mexican food to staff bots. There's definitely some lore based on this game, but it's based on the off the ruined DLC and doesn't have a main antagonist like the last VR game had with Glitch Trap. Also, this may be a little biased, but if you aren't playing the game, it's boring as hell to watch. I tried to watch a Let's Play of the game and it took me a while just to get through it. It's really boring. They do some things right, however, such as you play as Princess from the Princess Quest arcade game, which is really fun. Doing things in fast locations such as the Breaker Room or falling through Blur's Gallery as well, it's good to add as well. I reckon low because it's just a a lot of, it has a lot of cons, in my opinion, rather than pros. This one is less controversial because I feel like a lot of people may agree with me saying that FNAF The Security Breach wasn't that good. For starters, you could tell there was a lot of cut content for this game that I feel like that if we had, could have been made this game 10 times better. I would have had loved to bowl in Bonnie's Bowl or possibly golf in Gator Golf, but a lot of it was cut due to time crunch. If Sewell Studios literally waited a year for this game to come out, it would have been a lot better, and the fans would have been more satisfied. Another issue was it had so many bugs just on launch day, which they tried to patch, but also failing in the process. People were getting fast speedruns with all the broken mechanics in the game. Freddy was mainly glitched where he had trouble teleporting when you tried to summon him. Also, the jump skills were pretty mediocre as well. They tend to not be scary, and stop bots be more scary and annoying to deal with than the actual animatronics themselves. Lastly, the worst part of the game, which had a huge outrage, were the ends of Security Breach. Majority of the endings were these combo strips that had seemed like a cheap, quick attempt to make an ending. The only endings that were technically animated was the ends where the staff bots disassembled Freddy and the Burn Trap ending. Just on the topic of Burn Trap, why wasn't this part longer? We saw him for maybe like two minutes before we sent him to the fire. You'd think he would show up in the Ruin DLC, but he had actually no screen time whatsoever. He would have been a cool villain if his content wasn't cut. As you can see, there are many cons for this game, but there are also pros. It adds a lot of to new lore to the game and also changes the way FNAF games are, are because of the first free roam FNAF game. 
It had so many cool mechanics, and it just didn't have so many technical problems. Could have been a really solid game. I definitely rank FNAF Security Breach Ruin DLC to be better than the base FNAF Security Breach game. I liked how there was only one set storyline to this game where you had to find Gregory down in the pizza plex. That's it. The free room aspect is still there, but this time the game mostly leads you to where you have to go. I also do like the mechanics of the Vanny Mask and the AR World plus MX's character? I'm gonna call him Malware because that name is cooler. There isn't a lot of threat however. Each character has their own little part in the game, so when Malware shows up, only one Amtronic is shown trying to get you. One thing I didn't like about this game was honestly the mimic. Sure he looks like a badass character who is very buff, but we know absolutely nothing about him until the end of the game. Seriously, the only time the mimic story is mentioned is in the books or Kenny Cadet stories, right before you fight the mimic. The mimic as a character, however, is still pretty scary, but like Burn Trap gets a little like a minute of screen time. Also the story with Cassie and Roxy is pretty sad. This game also isn't buggy like security breach, so that's a plus. I feel like it's still ranked low, but the other FNAF games are just ultimately better. This game was definitely better than Help Wanted 2, but I think the game is alright at best. We played through FNAF 1-3 through 3 in VR, and we also played to play a fun little side game such as Vent Repair and Parts and Service. I do prefer these minigames rather than the second VR game. This game wasn't boring, but I didn't have much enjoyment watching this game. Again, playing it would have probably been fun, but watching, not as interesting. Another thing I liked is the character of Glitch Trap. He works as a good antagonist of the game, even though I'm not totally sure what his back clone lore is. He's supposed to be William Atkin as Code. Maybe if he had a jump scare, it would have made him a better character. Also, the endings were decent, but it looks like the, at each ending, rather than you winning the game, it's more Glitch Trap who won. This game had a more well understandable storyline and I respect what was going on with this game, but I wish it had more to it. Another fairly controversial choice, but another FNAF game that I wasn't a huge fan of. Usually when I play the first four FNAF games, I tend to skip over it because I don't find it as fun. Firstly, it wasn't as scary as the other games the game was to me, and this game also has one huge problem which makes the game kind of not fun. There's definitely too much going on happening at one once. There are 11 animatronics in this game, which frankly is way too much because most games possibly have half that in just with the base game. I also found that the Golden Freddy mode, one, it's very hard, two, it's very annoying to beat. You have to check out on Foxy all the time, check the side events too, one of the puppets music box and then follow the pattern. Problem is that some animatronics will automatically flip you down your camp so you can't wind up the puppets music box all the way. Also, the vent animatronics don't go away sometimes even though you put the mask on for animatronics to leave. Then Foxy will kill you because you had to put your mask on twice instead of checking on him, or the puppet will get you because his music box isn't wound up. It's a frustrating game, but this game is very OG and so it definitely fits with the series. The characters are good, jump kicks are pretty scary as well, but gameplay is just a little too much. Personally, I don't rank someone higher, but based on a lot of people's preference, everyone for some reason hated this game. Well, for starters, everyone hated Scrap Trap. It just looks like it's a whole new character, which doesn't even look like it's Spring Trap because it just looks like a totally different character while using the concept of Spring Trap. It just looks bad. Some of the element tracks aren't also too good, such as Molten Freddy and Scrap Baby, because they are, but they're still pretty good. Everyone loves Lefty, but personally, I don't get his presence about his character. It's just a puppet. Jump scares themselves for me are very scary, but it's based on how they come to you. Playing that office to this day, though, still gets me very scared to only play. The jump scares they come out pretty much out of nowhere, but the jump scares themselves are kind of mediocre. I love the savage gameplay, although I don't really find it as scary. Now let's get to the part where I love. I love making your own pizzeria. All the fun minigames I can play all day because they are so much fun. I also love the introduction to a lot of new characters such as Trash and the Gang, Mediocre Melodies, and the Rockstar animatronics. All pretty good concepts. Only issue for me is that the only section of characters such as the Funtime Chica, Music Man, and El Chip are pretty expensive. Usually, people don't get them unless you win in the Prize King minigame. There's so many pros to this game, and I love to come back to it from time to time, but so many people disagree. This location has so many pro pros, but they also have a lot of con cons. Let's start with the pros. I love the fact that we aren't just stuck in one certain room where we have to check doors or places so animatronics won't jump scare us. I also love how it has its own set storyline to it, and you have to do certain new tasks that weren't even ever shown in older games. Some of the pros I love is that I love the challenge of Ender Knight. Just the entire concept to me is pretty cool. I also like the challenge of Golden Freddy mode in this new night rather than FNAF 2. Now some of the cons. ET1 of them has to be Night 4. This night was so bad too to its, uh, just wind up spring locks for the entire night, which is crazy. Plus it's extremely hard in itself to actually beat that night. 
remember any challenge videos I added to as one of the challenges. Also, don't like the randomness of the characters I used for the custom night. And some characters I understand adding, like, yeah, like Yendo or Lobe, but Mini Mini 2 or Electric Bab were just pretty silly characters. Other than Kamba Night 1, there isn't any threats in the game. It's very short and you physically can't lose. They should have made Night 2 part of Night 1 because Night 2 was pretty long as well. Also, I wasn't a big fan of the mini game and you had to beat it or else you couldn't play Entered or do Custom Night. Plus, it was kind of hard to do. Overall, another fun game to play and I would replay it from time to time. I think out of all FNAF games, this is the one I played the most. That's because it's free on Steam, but that's beside the point. I love this game because it's a good different from the other games. Instead of being scary, it's just supposed to be an extreme challenge to complete. Unfortunately, I've never been in 50-20 mode, but I've tried, and it's hard. I love the little stories you get from when you complete a certain amount of points in the game. Chica's high school years, and Bears of Vengeance. I love the lore and easter eggs mixed in between there, whether it's a death message or a character has their specific easter egg. There's not much to say about this game, except for it's a really fun game to play, and I love going back to it from time to time. Another small issue is that there are characters who are definitely more balanced in difficulty than others, but I guess that could be a good thing. Overall, this game is fun, didn't make it first because it just need, needs that FNAF scariness. The first game was a work of art, then when broken down, it's just a masterpiece of a game. The jump scares are scary. The mechanics of the game are pretty simple, we have to check cams and close the respective doors when characters get close. This game was definitely a great introduction to Fires of Freddy's and it has little to no problems to it. Everyone who first played it not knowing anything about the game were naive and what to do, and never gotten jump scared at least once, whether it was from losing power, or not closing the door fast enough, or not checking out Foxy. Everyone remembers their first jump scare, and they were scared of it too. Also, the main challenge of FNAF 420 was 420 mode. It used to be a challenge above all challenges because no one could beat it. Even got coughed and thought it was impossible for anyone to beat, until one man stepped up to the plate and did it. His name was Big Bug. Afterwards, Mark Potter saw finally beat FNAF 420 mode. Now, unfortunately, people were found out about camera stalling in the game, which made FNAF 420 mode so much easier to do. Just FNAF 1 is a whole a lot easier game to play now, but when it first came out, it was a whole new thing. FNAF 1 is just so amazing. I rank FNAF 3 higher because, personally, I think it is scarier and definitely pertains to a huge part of the lore. We first hear of the character of Springtrap, which we know a lot about because he always comes back in every game. He's William Afton. The gameplay is pretty different from the other games as well, where you have to check out cam and play an audio alert to lure Springtrap away from us. Also, phantom animatronics will pop up to try to scare you or screw up your audio ventilation. If Springtrap gets too close, it's hard to lean him back, which will ultimately lead to a jump scare. I think the game is definitely more scary than FNAF 4 and it still could be a quite challenging when playing harder nights. I still love the concept of having to go through some secret minigames to get the good ending. Unlike the sister location minigame, they weren't a huge challenge to complete and you could get FNAF 3's good ending with more of an ease. There are a few issues with the game, such as night one, you don't die at all. There are no threats to be had in this night, which sucks because the game is kind of short and not knowing ha having a custom night, just a nightmare mode which is like a night six. Another issue that I personally don't have a problem with, but many people did, was Springtime's jump scare was pretty mediocre. He said it wasn't scary, but I personally still get scared of it from sometimes. Overall though, I love to play this game again and again. Night 4 is leaving my number one spot because I had little to no issues. Only issue people had with it was it wasn't that scary, but that is in the eyes of the beholder. The gameplay is very simple and fun, we had to check both side doors, your closet, and bed for any animatronics who are there. There are a lot of threats that can possibly happen there. I also like the addition of Nightmare Fredbear in Night 5, even though he's the only character. It didn't feel like he was filler at all. The minigames before each night were also pretty good having a lot of lore to them. It gave us the infamous Bite of 87 or 83 scene with the crying child. Also something new they added was the fun with plush mini minigame which gives you a cool boost by skipping 2 hours in the night. All the challenge modes are definitely challenging such as Nightmare and 420 mode here. The concept of Nightmare doesn't make too much sense to me, but definitely a scary character. Not to forget about the Howling update that came out with this game, which is a reskin with a lot of the characters from FNAF 4, and also added many challenges and cheats to the game. With all of this, I believe that this is the best FNAF game that existed. Great mix of scariness and challenge and content in general, which made it just a, such an enjoyable game. If you made it this far in the video, I appreciate you guys dearly for the support. And if you drop a like and sub, I will continue to make more of these type of ranking videos. Alright, I'll see you guys in another video. Peace out.